So, hello everyone. I assume everyone is here. I'm Janendra Malekar. I'm currently doing my internship here. And this is the app we developed together with, uh, in collaboration with Prisma Health. Uh, the app name is M Diabetes. It's a tool to improve blood sugar control in patients with uh, type 1 diabetes. So, so the challenge is to manage type 1 diabetes in children. The incidence of uh, type 1 diabetes in children less than 20 years is increasing in the US. Data shows that 1.9% 1. 1. increase per year between 2002 and 2015. Our challenge is, is uh, achieving consistent daily compliance and accurate estimation of carbohydrate content. Uh, these are the standards of care for managing it. Uh, one is pharmacolog uh, ph pharmacological management of youth in type 1 diabetes, uh, matching insulin doses to carbohydrate consumed. Methods are insulin to carbohydrate rate. We need to manage that. And uh, again, the challenges are accurate estimation and consistent compliance in pediatric uh, type 1 population, type 1 diabetes population. So the, there's a strong correlation between the carbohydrate counting proficiency and the hemoglobin uh, A1C values, which uh, determines if you have diabetes or not. A1C values between below 5.7 is normal. A, A1C between 5.7 and 6.4 is pre-diabetic. And A1C value of uh, higher than 6.5 is uh, it shows that you have diabetes. Uh, previous studies have shown that there's indirect correlation observed between carbohydrate intake and the importance is to facilitate insulin, insulin dosage according, accordingly to your uh, carbohydrate intake. The current methods are uh, proportion size approximation through visual estimation or manual measurement. Like you have a meal and you you sort of uh, determine how much carbohydrate I'm taking. That's the uh, current method right now. And the limitation is, as we know, not always feasible during day-to-day -day life. And uh, that's why we introduced the uh, K-Health Diabetic Gap. It's a mobile health framework for managing type, type 1 diabetic and pediatric patients. And uh, it allows uh, to monitor, it allows the clinician to monitor the, the their carbohydrate intake remotely and uh, patients can log their meal using images and text what they have eaten and uh, how much they think they have taken carbohydrate and what the what is the app calculate estimation is these are the these are some of the steps involved in that uh, uh, Image recognition is needed for this kind of thing, which is uh, identifying meals from images. And uh, we need an algorithm to estimate proportion size and nutritional breakdown of each of those, uh, whatever is present in your plate, calculation of nutritional information. Our, uh, our partners are Adamum, since Adamum provides us access to nutritional information of more than 2 million recipes and uh, estimation of carbohydrate intake for insulin dosage calculation can be based on that. So in testing of uh, this application, initially we test it with clinician, then we go to dietitians, that's a gold standard. Then after that, we'll uh, uh, have personalized recommendation of uh, uh, health condition and their food preferences. So 
K held up to firstly remote monitoring and accurate carbohydrate estimation for insulin doses, calculation in pediatric T1 uh, T patients. All right. right. Now I'll present to you some of the uh, C, C is the uh, clinician or uh, these are right, who is the MD in uh, pediatric uh, uh, M diabetes situation and she's helping us in developing this app and testing it with clinician. So I'll play this small video for you guys. Tonight, pediatric endocrinologist with Prisma Health. A little bit about where I'm from. Uh, I was actually born and raised in South Florida, the Fort Lauderdale area. Uh, I did a lot of my medical training at the University of Florida in Gainesville, Florida. So I'm a, a very big Gator fan. Um, a little bit more about my educational background. Uh, I did my medical school uh, training and my fellowship training for pediatric endocrine at the University of Florida as well, but I did my pediatric residency somewhat local to here, and that was at uh, in Medical University of South Carolina in Charleston. Pediatric endocrinology deals with the endocrine glands, and there are numerous endocrine glands in the body, to name a few, uh, the pancreas, pituitary gland, the thyroid gland, uh, but we treat children with a variety of different uh, glandular disorders. So some of the more common conditions we treat that are uh, more well-known are uh, type 1 diabetes and type 2 diabetes. And we see children for various thyroid conditions, um, growth disorders, pubertal disorders, amongst other things. When I was 15 and my brother was 17 years old, he was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. That was obviously years ago. Uh, treatment was a little different than uh, we didn't have some of the newer insulins and that we have now, insulin pumps, continuous glucose monitors. So um, he was very ill when he was first diagnosed. Uh, he was in the hospital, this was in South Florida, for about a week. Uh, and that um, hit me pretty hard just from an emotional perspective to have a family member he was ill and we didn't know much about diabetes at the time and I was worried about whether or not he would live because again then I didn't know much about diabetes at the time and it was um, quite a, an adjustment for my family when he came home from the hospital just trying to learn to help him live with a chronic health condition um, and I think that there are very few disorders where the burden of treatment is and deciding how much medicine to take and when to take it is put so much on the patient or the parent. Um, because of my experience with that, when I was in college, I uh, got very interested in nutrition and uh, volunteered at a camp for diabetes children multiple years, was a counselor, uh, and through that worked with um, numerous pediatric endocrinologists that would staff the camp. And so my love of endocrine started with my brother, so it started in my family, but then really kind of stretched out because of my um, workings with um, children with diabetes and then the pediatric endocrinologist that served as mentors for me. One of the most important things as a physician or as a provider is to um, lead by example. Um, so we talk a lot to our patients about healthy eating and trying to stay physically active. And I try my best to model that um, to my patients. Um, as well, I think uh, even young patients want to be a part of uh, their plan of care. Uh, as pediatricians, we spend a lot of time talking to parents. And I think that that's important to make sure parents have an understanding of what's going on and um, grasp of what the recommended plan is. But at, whether it's the beginning, middle, or end, I always try to look at my, my patient, regardless of their age, as long as they can talk, um, and, uh, and kind of go over with them what my thoughts are in a, in a, a layman's way, uh, and ask them if they have any questions so that if there's concerns that they have, that I'm addressing them as well. My interests outside of healthcare vary. Uh, right now, I am a mother of two, so I have a five and a half year old son and an almost two year old daughter. So, a lot of my time right now is spent, um, well, playing with them. 
so this gives you a small uh, the gravity of the situation of and gravities now i'll present to you our demo of our app and how does that work in this situation hello Today, we will be presenting a brief overview of M Diabetes, an application created to help patients with type 1 diabetes. Type 1 diabetes is a chronic condition where one's pancreas produces little to no insulin. Insufficient insulin leads to high blood sugar levels, which causes adverse health conditions. What makes this condition especially alarming is its prevalence is increasing. The incidence of type 1 diabetes in children less than 20 years is increasing in the United States, with a 1.9% increase per year between 2002 and 2015. Though incurable, type 1 diabetes can be managed by estimating carbohydrate intake and corresponding external insulin dosage. Estimating carbohydrate intake is a challenging task. Patients need to measure the food quantity, query the nutrition database for standard portions, and calculate the carbohydrates for their food quantity. Further, the patients need to keep track of their carbohydrate consumption to calculate their daily insulin dosage. In this work, we're introducing M-Diabetes, a mobile health application to estimate and monitor carbohydrate intake for type 1 diabetes patients. Developed in collaboration with Prisma Health, the app will let the user log their food through minimal user interaction and estimates the carbohydrate content of their meals. The patients can choose their convenient units to log their meals and other food intake. The app relies on Edamom, one of the largest nutrition databases in the world, to estimate carbohydrate content. Here's a quick demonstration of how the app currently is working. So let's say you just finished lunch and you want to know how many carbs were in the food you just ate. So first, we go to log food, select lunch, and then add the foods that we just ate. So. I just had chicken quesadilla, some sour cream, a tomato slice, and guacamole. Now we'll measure how much of each of these foods we just ate. So I had two whole quesadillas. I had six ounces of guacamole, three ounces of sour cream, and one slice of tomato. Now the app is asking for me to estimate how many carbohydrates I, I ate. So just by looking at this food, I'm not too sure, but I'll give my best estimates. So I think the quesadilla had 35 grams of carbs, the guacamole maybe 15, the sour cream two, and the tomato two. This screen contains the information needed for a computer vision model to determine how many carbs are in the foods that I just ate, just based on the pictures that I submit. However, this model is not yet perfected, but the front end that will be using this model is inside the app. So I will just give some information um, just to go to the next screen. So I put in the top view and also a side view. And I could also do this just by opening the camera, not just uh, selecting these pictures. So after clicking next, the app shows me an estimate of the amount of carbs that I just ate, and also my estimate. And if I feel that the app's estimate is more accurate, then I could select this. But if I'm pretty confident that I have uh, put in the amount of carbs, I could also select that. 
So I'm going to trust the app um, because I just did a rough estimate. So then I press submit. And in a future version, it'll show the information about the food that I just ate along with uh, previous dates and all the meals that I had those days. The app will also keep track of the patient's food intake and the respective carbohydrate contents for self-appraisal and self-management approaches. Further, keeping track of carbohydrate intake can aid the clinician in making informed decisions about insulin dosage adjustments. As our next step, we're working on estimating of carbohydrate intake based on food images. Then, we also plan to incorporate an explainable food recommendation system to suggest meals based on users' food preferences. All right. Thank you so much. That was the demo of the app. Uh, do you have any questions or any feedback? Yeah. So the app is still in the workshop. What? The app, the app that we just saw is not in the works. Yeah, is that's all. Yeah, uh, it is now. Um, um, it, it is now just starting to be uh, tried with the new patients. So to see, there are a lot of challenges here. Um, <clears throat> You have to make it, it very easy to use because we go with information. That's a huge challenge you have. The accuracy of, of uh, you know, uh, de determining how much any intuition there is is very difficult. But it's a lot. It grossly very much depends on the quantity you have, but it also depends on the way you prepare that food. You need uh, knowledge about how the food may be prepared and perhaps ask more questions about that. Um, uh, one of the things we try to, we are working on, we did work on is volume estimation. So when you take a photograph, uh, how large the, you know, portion is. A lot of it depends on, you know, maybe the same thing, but small amount is great, large amount is bad. And, you know, that has understanding that uh, automatically, from image is a very difficult computer vision problem. So all of these so image, um, you have a, somebody has a plate and you have four things on the plate. You have to segment each other in a plate and in each item and then detect each item and then detect the volume of each item. So uh, right now the best thing we can do is uh, do the estimation and that let's human verify. So, for example, the so uh, I have a, uh, a small, uh, you know, I will take a small portion and you can correct it to the game. So, these are the kind of things that uh, you have to do. The whole, pro whole problem to solve, the, you know, to solve the whole problem is extremely hard because of so much of the variety of the food, how it is prepared, how much you are eating, broad number of that's very, very interesting uh, from the AI. It's uh, not a finished cycle. He, he hasn't. Yeah. Yeah. So, what are the actual, like, uh, potential way that you're measuring the success? So, so, there are two ways that we are currently relying on. The first is the Adam uh, uh, nutritional database that you just saw. It has a it, it has carbohydrate value estimation already being prepared in a database. So let's say we say chicken quesadilla, it has some value for the carbohydrate estimate there. The second way is uh, to the food recommendation system uh, that uh, you saw Ranjit is working on yesterday that takes images and it casts out the, it draws bonding boxes on the on the food that you are eating. This is it, this is sugar. It's even uh, trying to find invisible uh, ingredients in the in the food so that's the second method that is under development 
So we are using both of the ways to estimate carbohydrate intake and what's not. But actually, uh, you know, so that part of the team is a nutritionist who is making the accurate prediction and seeing yes. whether uh, the computer, uh, you know, application is uh, coming with the right instruction. So, so you're measuring the estimation by graph. Yes, they they have to. So uh, C Revithi, C is the PhD student who is also working on uh, this project and other things related to food. So I'll play a small video introducing. Uh, you're also looking into nutrition and diet management. Essential nutrition intake and controlled calorie consumption significantly improve quality of life and overall well-being of our health. But the challenge for the person here is knowing the nutrition information and keeping track of the cumulative calorie consumption of their meals. Nourish is a chatbot built upon Google Assistant. It helps the users to manage and monitor their dietary patterns and weight and assist them in making more informed decisions about their food choices. It provides nutrition information for food or meals reported by a user, keeps track of cumulative calorie intake and recommend meals. It alerts the user with personalized information for example, for excess calorie consumption. Okay, tell me the nutritional content of one cheesecake. Here's what I found. It may not be a good idea for you to have cheesecake based on your diet restriction. Thank you. That was it. Thank you so much. Everything is doing currently a second internship or third internship at HP. Look back at labs.